Uh, maybe a minute earlier than usual, but the, se the second derivative on arrival rate seems to have calmed down. Um, so uh, this is our final meeting of the 50 years of satisfiability workshops. Um, it's almost the last meeting for the SAT program, but we do have one further meeting today at 11 uh, o'clock in two and a half hours from now, I should say, uh, which for a town hall wrap up meeting uh, and Antonita sent some announcement out to the pro program participants and encourage you to come. Uh, if you didn't get her message and want to come, just, just let me know. We can drop you the link. I think the link for the meeting, though, is not the same as the seminar link. So you should go to the link that's in Antonita's e email message for that. Um, so I encourage everyone to come to the town hall wrap up meeting after this. Um, and then otherwise, as I said, this is the final of the, the workshops uh, in, the, in the 50 years of satisfiability sequence. And um, one of the themes, both of the workshop, but of the whole SAP program is the interplay between uh, theory and practice. Uh, and so we actually are ending with two talks, uh, one by a person who's, I would say is maybe more on the practical side, uh, Armin, and the one who's more on the theory side. But nonetheless, I mean, both people have contributed to both sides, right? Both the theory and the practice. So Armin has uh, done a lot of practical SAT solving, but also contributed a lot to the theory of SAT solving, uh, especially as it pertains to the practical aspects. And uh, he's uh, speaking today on a personal history of practical SAT solving, a topic I'm really looking forward to. And uh, he's asked me, and I think he'll say it again himself, to, en to encourage interaction and questions. So for this, please post to the chat window or just break in and uh, speak up and we'll be happy to take um, interruptions. And uh, otherwise, Armin, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thanks Sam for, for the introduction and also thank you for, for the invitation. Uh, when I said yes, uh, um, uh, when Sam invited me, um, uh, I knew that this would be a really, really, really busy time. Uh, and uh, then uh, when I had to come up with a topic for this talk, like two weeks ago, I thought like, um, okay, I almost have no time, but there's this thing I always wanted to explain a little bit more. And that's uh, uh, actually this slide. So this slide is usually the slide I end with um, most of my invited or tutorial talks on SAT. Um, so if you have uh, seen my two other uh, talks in this uh, semester, so like one was four hours uh, in the boot camp, and then there was another one which was two hours. Um, then it ended with this slide, actually with a, a previous version of that one. And now uh, I have like slightly less than than one hour. Uh, and what happened in these other talks is usually that I, I cannot really go into this uh, history. And it, it looks to me that, um, uh, well, why not trying to like go through some of these, um, hopefully very interactively with you, um, would be a, a best fit for, for this workshop. So, so here's my personal start solving history. And of course, I apologize if I, if I miss anything else. It should say maybe the personal practical start solving history, of course. Uh, and um, if I miss some name, um, please, uh, I apologize. Um, anyhow, uh, so please interrupt me anytime. So Sam will monitor the chat. And uh, of course, like for the panelists, uh, I'd be happy to, to see you too, but I'm also happy to just answer your questions uh, through Sam. Uh, so we come back to this slide at the very end again of this uh, talk. So the talk doesn't have that many slides and should have then uh, also plenty of time to go through some of these points. Um, but um, why uh, do I um, actually do this? And here's like uh, four or five slides I, I did also for the bootcamp introduction talk. Well, uh, this is a slide I did for my dean once, but he wanted to know what I'm doing. And I just collected the slides, uh, the, the medals we received for our SAT solvers um, until 2015. And I took this picture. And uh, maybe a more interesting and more recent, more, a more recent, of course, here is this plot, which uh, uh, was done together with Marine. Uh, so we took the SAT competition 2020 uh, benchmarks, and then we're running it on our cluster for 5,000 um, seconds. So one hour, 23 minutes. And um, what you see down here uh, is here this um, uh, time, uh, so 5,000 seconds here, so I'm kind of the time limit. And on the y-axis, you see the number of 
uh, of solved instances. If you paid attention to such solving uh, history, in particular on the practical side, so you will see that this is not a cactus plot. It's kind of a, a cactus plot where, where X and Y axis are flipped. Uh, and like there are some who prefer that, like I, I started to become one of those. Uh, so higher is better here. So you solve more benchmarks, obviously. And uh, what you see here, um, this is this legend here on the right. And you see also like here, this blue dot here is this oldest solver here. This was the oldest solver which won uh, a competition in this century. So we have had two competitions uh, before in 1992 and one in, in Beijing. And um, these are like those uh, competitions which happened uh, in the last 20 years. And like my solver here, Kisat here solved a huge number uh, of benchmarks compared at least to the previous year's winners. So last year, there was a version of the year before. So in 2019, there was a version of, of Maple, um, not by the original authors. Actually, this is already the second generation of authors which modified Maple here. And uh, yeah, the, every year, like uh, last year, there was a Maple version. So there was a big improvement in 2016. Uh, and um, th this one, you see this jump here. And uh, yeah, here's uh, in 2014, my solver one, and also in 2013, another version of it. Then there were two glucose solvers and so on. So you see how here uh, on the right, um, the solvers, the winner of this particular competition, a map to the number of solved instances here on, on the left. And I would claim this um, shows um, a big um, Im improvement in, in SAT solving. Um, if you have um, attended also the talk from Holger last year, we're struggling a little bit in, in how to assess sort of the improvement of SAT, but I think this, this plot is convincing. Um, and um, in particular, for one reason, in 2016, the SAT community uh, in Bordeaux, uh, where this solo won, and there were lots of solos very close to this one, we kind of were a little bit um, frustrated because we don't understand like how to rank solvers anymore. But I think like this method here shows some improvement. I should also say immediately that there was last year actually two solvers right behind uh, this winner here, which was my solver Kisak. And um, but they're not here on this plot. So, so there was just a big jump last year in terms of sort of um, robustness and, and solving capability. And um, yeah, so this triggered some tweets and I, I explained this already in the bootcamp. Uh, so yes? Yes, yeah, so on your previous slide, actually it's two questions. Uh, first, you mentioned there were two other solvers that had a similar improvement. Yep. Was it due to the same techniques or different? Yes, they were the so same techniques. So it's like uh, interesting. So they both put a local search in it, which actually I proposed in 2019 already. And uh, they also use this uh, variant of target phases, both of them. So this is Crypto Minisat and the version of, of Maple, like this Maple here, but with CCA and R added. This came in second. And so all three, uh, also Kedigil, by the way, now have local search solver in it to sort of fix phases. And they all have some variant of these target phases, which I described with Matthias last year's post talk. We can go into that if you want, but. Um, yeah, well, that would be interesting. But let me ask my other question is, what if you ran the same types of tests, say on one of the early SAT programs, say we went back to say 2005 and ran mm -hmm. all these software on This the is of course, of course I will do this. This is one of the parts. I, I show you six more of these actually. Oh, very good, talk. okay. So you all see these. lots of them actually. <laughs> so we come to that. And uh, so, so in some sense, I'm showing like CDFs, which like these community distribution functions, which um, uh, are reactions to like what people ask me after I'm showing this the first time. So that's why, why I, I'm kind of anticipated this question. All right. Well, there's more questions or should I? Uh, Daniel posted a link in the uh, chat window to one of your papers, Armin, uh, Beer of Flurry Pods 20 talk. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, now, again, I have this window, which I can't get away. I uh, should have not clicked on this. So I move this up just a second. It doesn't go away. Maybe last time, what did I do? So I clicked on participant, then the window shows up, yeah, and then close it. Okay, great. So working again. And Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> okay, now there was a, um, 
also some of you might might have seen this. So this, so so we posted this, uh, or I posted this with the help of Marine on on Twitter. Actually, got quite some uh, reactions to that, which was surprising. And like people were astonished that you can solve these many variables. So here's like a distribution function. Actually, the the, the largest instance in the subcompetition has 700 million variables uh, in the planning track. Not here. This is the main track. So this is quite substantial. And also like on the right, you see here, uh, there's this uh, issue uh, by somebody using CBMC to verify deep neural networks. And inside um, of this verification, they're using Bullector, one, one of our SMT solvers. And in that there's Lingiling uh, by default, like an old solver of mine. And this has a variable limit of two to the power 27, what you see here. And then of course the thing crashes. And it's really amazing like um, uh, how far they got. Uh, actually, they would probably need like a half a terabyte machine to actually run this. But it, it turns out that actually people are producing larger and larger benchmarks and it's really no, uh, no um, joke what I'm doing here. So Andrew Chone is using Bolector in the company in, US, in the UK. And he already also figured out that, yeah, maybe sometimes you really want to have like int max variables. So this is 2 billion variables. And now my SAT solvers actually are working with this uh, large number of variables. So this was the direction then of Aina. And yeah, so, so you see here in the numbers, maybe this is interesting. So Lingling has two to the power seven, Kedigal has really int max. Uh, Kisat has currently two to the power 28, which is like 256 uh, million variables. And I'm pretty sure if I continue hacking SAT solvers for a while, I will need to move to 64-bit variables, so more than 2 billion variables. I think this is really amazing. So then, of course, we did the handbook. You must have seen this a couple of times. So I'm, I'm just showing this to sort of like, yeah, I should show this. So this is the old handbook. We had this uh, um, from 2009, and we had these chapters. And, and then there's a picture with Donald Knuth. Donald Knuth also got into SAT and he, he actually visited us here in Linz, gave a nice talk and, and played the uh, Pukno origin. And, and then uh, he wrote this uh, 300 page uh, section, uh, subsection or sub subsection of the volume four. And uh, it's also only about uh, SAT. Um, and yeah, here's the beginnings. I'm sharing this too, that there's really like 300 uh, pages. Of course, half of them are exercises. So you should not, it's not like 150 pages of real material, but the exercises are really tough. So some of our papers just turn into like a two line exercise. Okay. Um, then uh, this year, we're going to have the second edition. So this is of course like but should, should be mentioned when we talk about the history of SAT. So, so these are seven new chapters and uh, you can read them. So I'm not going through that uh, now again. And uh, they were also mentioned here in several talks in this uh, special um, semester already. So this is how it looks. Uh, actually, uh, I haven't seen the physical version yet. So people keep asking, but I got an invoice yesterday. So it seems to be shipped um, and now I come to um, uh, one variant of what um, um, uh, Sam asks. So this is another plot. So it's very similar to the other one, uh, but it has 21, I think, or like roughly 20 uh, SAT solvers. The other one had just 13. So it, for instance, has here, it's the same data as before. Uh, it has the grasp from 1997. So with the help of Joao, I was able to, to, to get this working. Uh, because it's not trivial to port this old C++ code to, to newer machines. Uh, the same is true to Sharat and um, Moskovich, who, um, uh, yeah, actually this was a little bit difficult because they, they had various versions of this Jeff on the hard disks, and some of them were compilable, some not. So I have here one version, which I think is consistent, and you see it fails here somehow. Um, actually, my first solver, uh, Limat, uh, I should tell you this history about that one. So I read this paper by uh, the friends from Princeton by Chaff, and I could not believe it. So, so I don't know whether, how often this happened to you in your career. So I, I would say uh, at least half, at most half a, a dozen times. And this was one case. So I read this paper and I couldn't believe what they're, what they're claiming. Okay. And uh, my reaction was I had to... Um, implement this, what they're saying. And of course, I'm, originally I failed. Uh, so I was never able to um, get their speed up. But then at one point when the source code became available, it actually was Lintao's version, not this version. So Lintao Cheng with a Z, 
This is the Z chef. So this is sometimes called M chef or the original chef was called just chef by Moskiewicz. So this was the sort of the source code of the original paper, which actually kind of was never really published. Uh, was only available very briefly on the internet. So the one everybody was viewing afterwards was the, the version of Lintau. And uh, only after like Lintau's version came available, I was able to fix some issues actually related to, to uh, unique implication points, which is uh, actually an interesting current topic. Yeah, I added some more. We had a big uh, step uh, forward here in, in 2005 with this. Uh, this is kind of uh, the preprocessor I did with Niklas Ehm together uh, with a, a Minisat. Um, or they, it was not Minisat, it was the predecessor of Minisat. And uh, Minisat was also here in this competition, but was worse than the version with the, com with the satellite. Then the the next mini sat here, they incorporated this preprocessing inside. Um, so this is why people improve. Then there's crypto mini sat, like preprocessing is of one of my solo, which won a competition. Then there's kind of a period where glucose was, was leading. Um, then um, I came up with this um, lingeling, and uh, which had lots of this in processing. So this was kind of the start of the in processing phase. Actually, all the solvers above here use in processing, not just pre processing, but in processing. You can think of so pre processing started here in 2005. And then since 2013, all the winners have uh, in processing in it. Uh, and then I claim so, so that we came here also to a, a kind of a from here, right? to a, uh, kind of um, uh, a point where there was progress, but slow progress. And then last year we saw another big jump. So you maybe um, one thing you can really see here, these jumps come in maybe five year um, distance and we have seen them every five year. And, and, and furthermore, uh, they're often combinations of techniques, which is also of course difficult or not nice from a scientific perspective. Right, so when I explained today, so that the big jump here was due to kind of two techniques. The same was true here for the for for this jump from here to here because it was the Minisat implementation, but also it has lots of things which I could explain uh, plus the the preprocessing. Okay, and. Um, yeah, one thing I also want to point out in the SAT competition had uh, had only like uh, in the very beginning closed source solver. So this Berkman here was never available. And there's a siege set solver for which we don't have source code. And there's some Intel solvers too. Okay. Um, Armin, could I yes. ask a question? Since no one else is asking a question, I'll jump in again, but I hope someone else will take up the slack for me. Uh, I just heard on Monday a rumor that Minisat was named Minisat because of clause min clause minimization. I always thought oh, that, could, was a small that could well be, but I don't know because I have papers with both authors, and uh, I don't know. So I should ask Niklas the okay. Niklas Sörensen. So Niklas Sörensen was the one who invented this uh, minimization, actually. No, Minisat is minimalistic sat. It's <laughs> that, uh, yeah. So in two thousand three, that was uh, the first version of Minisat. It minimalistic sat. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. That's what I always thought, but I heard this other rumor going around. So. No, it's also because it's only uh, Niklas Sörensen invented this uh, minimization and it was later, right? This was parallel uh, with our um, uh, satellite work here, which is with the Niklas A, not with Niklas Sörensen. Okay. So, so time-wise, that's probably right. All right. Um, <clears throat> All time winners on the SAT competition to, uh, 2011 benchmarks. There was kind of a, a claim by, by some uh, people, I will not repeat the names, in, in the post workshop uh, two years ago, um, that they were not happy with uh, um, how we do the, the ranking and that nothing changed since 2011 was one of the sort of like uh, things put forward. Uh, and before I explain that note, uh, so these are the same solvers, uh, but on the 2011 benchmarks. Uh, these here are way harder benchmarks. Uh, so so uh, these are 400 benchmarks and we're like solving 250 while, while oops, sorry, while these guys here, uh, they are from 292, right? So all, except for um, now maybe uh, 40, 50, we solve all of them now. So um, 
uh, this is a, a quite different um, benchmark set. So in a certain sense, I would maybe say, um, yeah, because these benchmarks were picked in a certain way, but I, I guess uh, some of the people who helped to pick them are in the audience. Um, so uh, maybe you should really sort of cut off here because here uh, maybe this, this is a different, um, a different type of benchmarks. But anyhow, so I wanted to show that, that we have exactly the same trend, except that the, uh, the things are uh, more compact, but that's probably just due to a, a smaller number of benchmarks, like 292 versus 400. Yeah, uh, Armin, may I comment yes. on this? Uh, yes, I think that there is also a, a big difference is that some of the solvers have seen those benchmarks. So yes. all the ah, solvers, yes. are, yes. Uh, and so they have been trained, tuned, and uh, which is not the case for for the 2020. So that yes, also makes I should, a yeah, yeah, I should I should point this out that uh, of course, like all these solvers here, like since uh, 2013, are heavily tuned on on these guys, right? So they have seen them and they tried to improve them. So they, they, they they've been running on the cluster for a long time. But here, these benchmarks are brand new. And I think like there were like hundred use old ones, but three hundred new ones or something. But I'm 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 happy to be corrected here, and um, and they are considered way harder than 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 um than the, the uh, than in two thousand and eleven. Yep. And I guess the the variety of benchmarks is also much uh, more important currently than ten years ago. Yeah, so 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 the, the yeah exactly so the the organizers do the following so they pick uh, you have to bring your own benchmarks so that means you have to always submit some interesting benchmarks uh, and then they pick from each source at most 20 and they don't even uh, always pick 20 so that and this is not the case here for for 2011 okay um then Daniel, because you're here, so you you tweeted it two weeks ago, and um, <clears throat> well, because I was busy, I, I wrote, oh, I cannot do this. What you write here at the bottom. So so he was uh, um, announcing this talk here, Daniel, and uh, he said like I remember the solvers Lima, Comsat, Nanosat, Picosat, and more, and uh, I've been like submitting to all these competitions. And uh, then uh, Daniel asked he would want to see a cactus plot, and then I answered, which is not on the slide. Uh, yeah, well, I will show you a CDF because um, we kind of disagree whether CDF or cactus plant is better. Uh, but then uh, actually Matthias was so nice, uh, Matthias Fleury, a postdoc in my group, was so nice to run uh, some uh, uh, of these solvers, actually most of them. And I just finished one more run an hour ago. Um, so I'll show you this on the next slide. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, here's one more thing I wanted to show you. So in the middle was another tweet where um, somebody was working on this Conway light and they tried to find sort of like uh, some uh, sort of stable um, or sort of producing or things which kind of work forever um, state machines in a sense. And uh, uh, Adam Goucher has been doing this with the SAT software. So he puts a thank you uh, to me because um, he was only able to do that with with uh, Kisat and Cadical. Um, okay, so so this is the plot which uh, Matthias helped me to produce. Um, these are almost all solvers um, of mine. Uh, there's like um, um, just a second. It says my internet uh, is unstable, but you can hear me, right? Um, so. Um, um, I have uh, a couple of uh, solvers I lost, it seems. Uh, so I found them in my CV, but I cannot find the source code anymore. And uh, most of them, um, I mean, like I, I, I claim actually all of them are really written from scratch. So I do this thing that you kind of throw things away and uh, then start from scratch. Of course, the algorithm um, are, are uh, capped and then refined. And then you kind of concentrate on the, uh, sort of minimalistic part you want you need to achieve a certain effect, and you saw already Limat here, uh, which which won one track in the competition in two thousand two. But it's like a, a little bit strange because they had a uh, at the end uh, a tie, and then they used three benchmarks to uh, break the tie. And I was so, my solver was solving one more benchmark than the competitor, so it was I was winning kind of by one one instance. Um, 
Yeah, and then there's some lots of uh, solvers like this such solver I, I did just for uh, this seminar for this uh, boot camp. Um, so this is the latest, uh, this 4.17 is the latest public version. In the meantime, I played with adding pre-processing to it, but only variable elimination. Uh, didn't, and uh, when I'd be able to re release it, there will be something more. Uh, and uh, you see from here to here also a small jump. Uh, and of course, the reason why such um, uh, really leads all the other ones here is because uh, it's kind of uh, incorporates all the, the lessons learned from Kisat and Cadigal in terms of what you need to get a, like a fast CDCL loop. Uh, and um, it's also highly configurable, documented. So, so I urge you to, to look at it. So you can also watch the other two talks uh, if you want to learn more, more about uh, uh, this software. Uh, and then I expected a question here, but nobody asked the question. Then yeah, yes, yeah. so I mean, so what was the, the big difference between NanoSat and PicoSat? Because you see there is a the huge difference. Oh, this is uh, this um, RSAT thing. And a nano and also reducing was not good in NanoSat. So these two solvers, NanoSat and uh, Comsat, they Comsat did not reduce causes at all. Yeah. So and uh, which is very funny. Uh, so if you would compare, so so you will if you will see that uh, Grasp um, has similar performance as as NanoSat. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, Comsat and then nan NanoSat um, actually. Um, uh, 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 also, what had an uh, uh, inferior scheme into reducing, and also had another problem. So you only used one watch for learn clauses, which is of course not something you want to want to do. And then PicoSat was a big step forward. And um, yes, then Cleanling was uh, like such a solver which was meant for sort of a summer school actually tutorial, and. Yeah, and so on. So I could explain more about the, the single ones if you want, but I have some more stuff. So that's why yeah, and, and just one more thing. So which solvers are running uh, local search on among those ones in parallel to, or include local search uh, in, in addition to CDCL? So key set. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. I think we may have lost. No, um, no, I, I mean, is here. Oh, here, it's screen sharing's back. Okay, good. Yeah. Armin, you're muted. Yeah, I was kicked out. It said before my internet connection is strange, so I'm not sure. Um, uh, uh, anyhow, uh, so I, we were talking about uh, local search, right? Uh, yes, so I was just asking uh, how many of, uh, of your solvers uh, on this plot uh, are using local search? Uh, Kisat, and, uh, this was exactly the, the point I want to say here. So there's this Yalsat, which is a local search solver, and I put this on purpose here. Um, okay. And it solves more benchmarks than Limat. And if you uh, go back here to this plot, um, oh, here I don't have it, uh, but you see that uh, Limat was actually here way above the solvers, which were like from the from last century. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's easy to claim that at least in 2020, and the uh, same is true, but to a less extent here in, in, in 2009, um, that these um, pure local self so we can only solve satisfiable instances is actually doing not bad, right? And that's true to some, some of the part of the history I, I have on my slide. Uh, but uh, yeah, so these two are uh, only doing local search. So such does not have local search in it yet. So the, only these two guys, and of course, this is a pure local search so. So, Armin, okay. I, Armin yes. just, um, you mentioned a couple of concepts that I'm not sure what you meant and maybe others don't. You mentioned the earlier solvers didn't do very good clause reduction. And then you've mentioned local search several times. I was wondering if you just say a, a few sentences on what those two, two concepts are. Yes, yeah, so, so clause reduction means that like, um, um, so, so in CompSat, uh, it, uh, um, I just learned clauses and I never, uh, I always kept them forever. And I really uh, thought like, this is good. And, uh, but then uh, there was um, a competition where um, like Combs had lost uh, dramatically against other solvers. And the main reason was because the other solvers eagerly re uh, were throwing away clauses. Um, and, and so I learned, so throwing away learn clauses, which are kind of not used. This is the, it's called reduce in, in the solvers. 
And yeah, you could think of it as a cache, right? So it's like a, the learn clauses are a cache of the search and you cannot, you don't want to keep, um, even though you would have space, uh, you don't want to uh, keep these clauses because they, they slow down the propagation. That's the whole source. So you just throw them away. Yes. The and then the local reduction. search, it's really, um, yes. The clause reduction is the same as clause deletion, in other words. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so reducing the clause, the learned clause database was kind of the, I think, original idea of why people started to use reduce as a term for that. Um, it's this third word like restart, reduce, right? We have one which is called refacing. So that's why I like this. So it's a word which describes this uh, part of reducing the learned clause database. And then local search uh, really is a classical local search algorithm. And um, yeah, this is what I expected. So we're running out of time. So, so I would have have a, a way of explaining it on the Blackboard because this is one of my favorite things which happened in the last 10 years. But maybe we'll do this only if, if we come back to this. I would want to explain Popsat, which is a very cool idea and very easy to explain. And there was not much talk about practical local search uh, in this whole seminar. So that's why I thought maybe that would be a way to, um, to sneak this in. But, um, and Trialsat is a version of this Popsat idea. Okay, so it's a walk uh, variant. There's a question in the chat window, if you don't mind. Uh, Massimo Lario asks, are any, oh, and any of the results are obtained with something like XOR or cardinality detection? Question mark. Ah, yes, uh, yeah, Lingeling -ling has this in it. And uh, that's one of the reason why, um, like for instance, if you also saw the talk by Holger and you paid attention to his uh, way of um, measuring a contribution that was Lingeling -ling actually highly ranked and the reason for that is because Lingeling -ling does pre-processing with Excel clauses and, and cardinality constraint. And if you uh, have sort of um, instances like pigeonhole or things like that, which can just be done by extracting, for instance, cardinality constraint and then doing some kind of elimination or the same with, with Satin formulas and you run Lingeling -ling on it, then uh, it will just instance these of these instances. And that's of course, gives you a big contribution, but from a real practical perspective, it's kind of useless. So none of my new solvers has this implemented, uh, but I, if I would implement it, I could solve like uh, more instances. Okay. All right. Not much more. So, so I have the same for 2009. So we discussed this uh, and I have less solvers. So I, we ran out of time in producing this. So I probably want to skip there and, unless somebody wants to ask something here. And then I have two more slides and then we could go to back to the timeline plot. So here's like things we could um, also discuss. And, but I again think we should focus on the timeline and come back to this if, if you're interested. Okay, so this is, the, the timeline I usually show at the end of the invited talk. And now uh, if I count right, I have eight minutes to, <laughs> to explain uh, these things. Um, all right, so here uh, we have DP and DPLL. Actually, this should be put probably a little bit earlier because uh, yeah, I saw a, a technical report uh, where this research was described in from 58, um, but the journal article appeared in, in 1960 and 1960, on, I think so. And uh, yeah, then you would ask, what's the next thing here? Well, this is where I was born. And then <laughs> we have this starting point for this 50 years name of the seminar, right? Like 71 was the, the proof uh, from Stephen Cook on completeness and P completeness of SAT. And this red line here, this is like where we are now. And you see already sort of like one milestone here well, we we'll should have the handbook of uh, the second edition of the handbook in our hand this year. The first one appeared in 2009 here. And in the middle, there was uh, Knuth's book on, on, on SAT. So this is kind of the, I would say for me, at least personally, the, the, the biggest uh, uh, milestone. Um, yeah, then let's let's look here at the, at the first um, uh, part here. So here I put Satin encoding. This was of course used in the proof complexity um, community, not really in the practical um, SAT solving community. But when we did this bound model checking at CMU in uh, 98, we worked on this. Um, actually, people worked on BDDs and didn't know how to actually get the formula into CNF, right? And it kind of from a practical side, it was extremely important 
to know about this fact. And we just learned this uh, uh, sort of like uh, through the uh, theory uh, community. And uh, yeah, I remember uh, talking to some colleagues at CMU who said it's impossible to do such solving to real industrial benchmarks because you cannot get a short formula to describe something. But it's not true with the Satin formula, uh, Satin uh, approach. Uh, All right, then. So um, um, then um, yes. Wasn't the original Satin encoding already in, in around where the asterisk is by 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 Gregory Satin? Yes, I think this is the wrong date you write. So I think there are like there are citations here, right? Also 68. in Russian. 68. 1960, yeah, not, not, yes, 1968. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also like close where I was born. Okay, good. I, I need to move this. Thanks. But anyhow, so I wanted to point this out. This was really like early and it's, uh, ext it was extremely uh, important for, for adopting here. Uh, when we wrote this BMC paper for DAC, this was the main point explaining the Zetian transformation, right? And that let these people really apply a uh, SAT in a practical sense. Yeah, then there was a, 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 a like in AI, there was a big um, sort of concentration on, on SAT and in the um, early uh, 90s, and um, it started already like uh, 10 years earlier maybe. And um, this, the focus back then was this local search I was talking about, uh, but people also started to look at look ahead uh, but like not that much. And, and one important part there was they applied it to, to SAT, uh, they applied SAT for planning. But, but I, I would say still sort of more in an academic way. So that the difference to our BMC uh, application work here is of course, this has had immediate uh, consequences for applying these things in, in practice. Um, then there was a, a, a big, uh, so they used this uh, GSAT uh, method uh, another method which appeared later, which is called WalkSat, uh, also based on local search, is, uh, uh, is, is better and Im improved uh, the, uh, these local search dramatically. And then, of course, you all know that Shaoma uh, Kisila and Karim Sakala came up with this CDCL, uh, which, where in my view, the, the main part is this uh, uh, learning and the implication graph. Uh, and in learning, in a sense, exactly what we discussed before, keeping those clauses, right? So in this CP community, they also had this idea of no good learning. They had back jumping. They don't describe how they compute these no goods, right? So, so but uh, Shao and, and Karim were explicit on using this implication graph. And then they also introduced the, the first UIP clause. But you need this reduction we talked uh, uh, before, actually, in order to, to really make this work. And uh, that's kind of the chain, big, big, big game changer here. Now our BMC work led to some more people looking in at the SAT. So like um, Sharad Malik and his group in Princeton um, actually used this to get a project on trying to implement um, um, uh, uh, SAT solver into, um, into hardware. And out of this project came this sort of the, 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 this, this uh, chaff and this, this results on VSITs. Uh, which was another big breakthrough in SAT, right? It's, um, yeah, and then I, I should put here a mini SAT, which I think we simply forgot, it seems. So the two mini SAT authors here are um, uh, responsible for, it should be here, uh, for uh, really uh, putting lots of uh, new insights into how to implement these, uh, uh, these ideas fast, and in particular, how to do visits fast and other things in the SAT so. And actually around the same time, which is also quite interesting from a historical perspective, this satisfiability model theory came around. And it really needs this idea of CDCL to, to really make use of this sort of communicating CDC, uh, uh, theory source. Uh, and that's uh, for many people, um, one of the big improvements. Uh, what's also funny, um, there was a big distinction between SAT and SMT. So people were careful to say that this uses a use of a SMT solver. And now people use more and more, uh, actually call even SMT solver SAT solvers, which is also a pretty intriguing uh, uh, question. All right, so uh, here is like bounded variable elimination, which is the first really very powerful proof preprocessor and still today probably is the most important one. But in essence, it's just a variant of this old DP uh, and but using it in a slightly different way, right? Really using it as, as a preprocessing and bounding it. Um, 
Yeah, then uh, two more things I wanted to, to explain. So there's this PropSat, which is a very cool local search variant of, of WalkSat. Very easy to explain. If I would have more time, I would have explained it, but I think we're running out of time. Then uh, face saving was also a big idea. And this is uh, just uh, which, to which value should you assign a variable? And this gives a really impressive practical uh, improvements uh, without really being really complicated from a sort of um, uh, implementation perspective. It's like two lines or three lines of code. And um, yeah, here, um, uh, is LBD or glucose level, which was invented by, by Gilles and Otmar. Uh, and, and this uh, gave a new view on how to, uh, you, uh, how useful are the causes. So once again, so this uh, CDCL here com compared to the previous CP work kept the learn clauses. Um, now keeping all the learn clauses, you cannot because you will just run out of, 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 of steam in propagation. This was my comp sat. Now you need good ways to remove clauses. And this was kind of the big uh, sort of improvement here was done by my two French uh, colleagues in 2009. Um, yeah, then uh, I want to maybe highlight out uh, the in-processing I mentioned already, like uh, in, since 2013, all the winners of the SAT competition use in-processing, which means you, you really interleave uh, CDCL search in pre-processing. And I want to point out here this part, which, which I think I'm sort of like, as a SAT um, person, I'm uh, really proud of. So this is Avatar is a technique, uh, the vampire theorem prover, which is kind of the world leader in, in first order theorem proving uses to, to implement uh, first order uh, resolution. They actually drive the whole resolution process by a SAT solver these days. And they even query SAT solvers. So it's actually very similar to how SAT solvers are used in SMT. So you can really claim that first order theorem proving the best solvers there, in particular in practical application, use SAT at, the, at this, their core. And it goes further because if you think about like, what do you do if you verify, let's say an operating system kernel? Well, you will uh, probably do this in Isabel or in some other like um, higher order logic framework. Uh, and the biggest improvement probably in the last 10 years in this domain was to come to use the use of these hammers and hammers are, are um, sort of like techniques to take this first order problem and translate it, abstract it to a say first order or SAT or SMT problem and then use a SAT solver in any case, so even if they would use a first order theorem prover, they would use a SAT solver to solve sort of higher order uh, logic uh, problems. And then from that you would get either proof or if you if you try to find the content uh, example, yeah, and then this brings me, and I'm running out of time, one minute over time, uh, but we still have like 15 minutes for discussion. So, so there's a couple of things which which are green. Um, actually, uh, today I removed this green thing here for arithmetic solvers because we do have a couple of papers. We also contributed um, to it uh, on on really using sort of an algebraic reasoning. That's what I mean here. But also maybe pseudo Boolean reasoning could be put there um, to improve the, uh, the the effectiveness of SAT solvers. And so, this, so what's missing here, that's why I'm kind of was reluctant uh, to really put this here is, is really doing it on the CNF level. That's nobody has done yet. So the only way uh, how we can do it is like, this is what Lingeling does, like extracting this algebraic um, information and then running an uh, arithmetic uh, solver on it. Also in crypto mini sats, there are like attempts in this, this direction. Yeah, here are things which, which um, uh, I think still need some work. So um, the parallel part is, uh, is not solved yet. So doing SAT on parallel machines uh, from in, on all levels is, is, is unclear. Maybe uh, we know what to do if we, we run a portfolio. So I mentioned this here. Uh, so maybe up to eight cores, 16 cores or something, but having like 96 cores or uh, I don't know, thousands of uh, cores on your graphic cards or running the solver in the cloud, this is really unclear. Um, we, we know how to do it for hard combinatorical problems. This is this cube in conquer. Somehow still partially manual this work, the splitting part, but sort of using SAT solvers in a, in a massively parallel way um, just for any problem that's uh, unclear. Like for QBF, maybe big improvements. We have also a new chapter, 
but we're still lacking a, a sort of killer app. So SAT sort of had killer apps. Like I, I claim the first one was our BMC, but there are other uh, apps. And of course, lots of application of SAT now uh, for QBF, we don't have that, um, um, I claim. Uh, and I would be really happy to, to, to prove him wrong here. Um, SAT and SMT everywhere. So this is slowly actually happening. So if you're like a, a do submit jobs to the Amazon cloud, they would um, schedule these with uh, CVC4 and uh, would solve some constraints, which in turn would use SAT technology. So uh, maybe these SAT servers are slowly getting anywhere. So it's, and uh, um, yeah, so um, I would say we're looking forward to more um, work on this and um, yeah, I, I still think the, the, the history of SAT, so this improvement, the SAT revolution, which I, I put in the abstract is actually continuing. And I don't see uh, any slowdown. We're making progress every year, both on, on theory and on the practical side. Okay, thanks. So that, that concludes the things I wanted to say. Thank you very much. That was a very nice talk. Uh, I'll clap on behalf of everybody. And we have definitely some time for questions. So I uh, hope everyone will jump in with questions and so forth. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yes, May ahead. I ask? Uh, so, I mean, so we are, in, uh, we are back in 2002 and you have a, a chance to implement one thing from 2021 in Limat. What would it be? Um, well, that's interesting. Um, Mm, well, the face saving for sure. I am not sure. Like face saving only works together with restarts. I'm not sure actually. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, I think like the way how cost reduction done is extremely clever. So, the, so, so the, uh, maybe I should mention this. So, so this restarting and uh, the cost reduction. So th these are things like which partially were solved here. Uh, now I think I know how to do that. So of course, like, as I said, it was partially solved around the time. So with this LBD and also here with the uh, face saving, right? So, but it took still 10 years to really find a way how to do it precisely. And of course, like maybe somebody came up with an even better way, but um, the current way how clause reduction, you can read this up in my, in the source code function of such. Uh, this is what I would say is the, the, the biggest uh, uh, improvement. Uh, I'm also not sure I forgot to mention Chansik O's work. I should really put this here. This happened in 2013, I think, like switching between uh, fast and slow restarts. And that's also very important. Yeah, I don't know, very, very hard to say. I would say it's the, the reduction is, uh, doing reduction uh, is probably the most important because if you can sort of remove like, um, um, you see, like the LBD allowed us to remove, uh, instead of um, uh, keeping the uh, sort of like a, a fraction of the learned clauses, a fixed fraction, because you had a geometric increase of the uh, reduce schedule, um, they, with this LBD, we were able to move to an arithmetic one, which essence means you can, after like 10,000 conflicts, you only keep a square root of 10,000 clauses without losing efficiency. And this really improves uh, your solvers kind of quadratically if you think about it, right? There's a, Thanks. There's a question in the chat window from, um, from Mate Seuss. Uh, there seems to be a lack of understanding how different techniques interact. Why do you think this is the case? Too difficult, too obvious, too many techniques? No, it's a, so, so this is a good, very good question. And, and Martin knows this, of course, uh, but he doesn't do it this way. So this is why I throw away the sat solvers like once in a while, because I think uh, the only way to figure that out is you only implement some of the stuff you did before and then figure out what's really sort of the smallest uh, combination of things. So, so this just happened actually to, to Matthias and me. So we presented this uh, um, target facing, which is one of the parts of the, one of the reasons for this um, improvement last year. And uh, this target phase is we thought we also need to randomly flip uh, the, the, the signs and also to, um, to, to flip it somewhere. But this is really not useful. This is just um, not necessary. And we only came to this conclusion after implementing such and in such it didn't make a difference. And then we ported it back to Catico and, 
in Keysight. So it's a very painful way, way of figuring out what are the things to um, kind of which are kind of dependent and which need to need to be kept and which not. Okay. Um, see another question from the chat window that Valentin Meyer Eichberger asks, um, quote, QBF lacking killer application, quote, isn't the application side waiting for the solvers to be ready slash mature to solve more than trivial for formulas? Well, the, the, the issue is, um, well, first of all, there's like a format problem. So QBF um, was an, always considered as an extension of, of of uh, SAT and so it worked on CNF, but that's not good for various reasons. So it's just because kind of in QBF solutions and count examples are kind of um, uh, kind of should be in the same format, right? But if you move from a CNF to its negation, you get like not a CNF anymore. And um, this is one one way, one thing I think where the, the sort of the, the community made a mistake on kind of just adopting CNF. So um, now, um, these there are solvers and technologies which work also on CNF, but my feeling is you would also need some sort of applications where you start off with a with a circuit or with a with the formula, and and then use the full power of of, of QBF. That's my my belief, uh, and we haven't seen uh, examples like that much. Um, I'm, I have some old, like more than 10 years old paper where, for instance, in the context of model checking, where we uh, actually in, in 1998, we first tried to use QBF solvers for model checking, then failed, and then did this BMC, right? Um, and there, the, we only have negative results. And so maybe we need, just need a different sort of application where it's obvious to use QBF and it's the right formalism. That's my... I think the solvers are, are ready, but not like the sort of the problems don't fit the input format. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, uh, Cole Deep Meal asks uh, in the chat window, what about non-CDCL based solvers? And also, can you comment on non-CNF representations such as PB or XOR, su uh, pseudo Boolean or XOR, right? Oh, um, so first one would be, yeah, we do of course this look ahead thing. And uh, yeah, um, of course I've been playing with this for long, uh, many times and uh, this look ahead currently is most important for these hard combinatorical problems. And there we will see more um, sort of mixed um, things then. But if, if Kultip actually meant a different sort of solving technology like PB solving and, um, uh, um, uh, ILP solving, for instance. Yes, I, I totally agree. There should be sort of more interaction. And we saw this actually in this last, last half year. There is interaction between the groups. And um, um, yeah, and, but, but, but yeah, maybe you see like with these PB solvers uh, and, uh, um, and also with the um, arithmetic solvers, um, we always struggle to get, get it back into the, from the CNF into the rhythmic problem. And, and that might actually be sort of a similar problem as in QBF, maybe this is not the right way to present the problems. Um, um, and of course we need proofs for these. So this is something I didn't discuss much. So this is a big thing here on my slide here. I completely forgot to mention this. Um, like the last five years, I would say before the competition last year, the biggest thing I think in SAT, practical SAT that we have these proofs like both for mathematical problems, but also sort of in practice. Um, and that's a big thing. And now when we go to this arithmetic solvers or PP solvers, how, what, what do we do with the proofs? It's unclear. And um, we, we heard some talks here, but like, I would say we don't know exactly where we're going. Okay. So Armin, can I ask you a question? Yep. So um, you mentioned that Minisat played a very important role for, for SAT solver development. Yep. And now, I mean, looking at this slide, you have this plethora of different techniques like face saving and switching phases and reduction techniques in LBD and whatnot. And it's a bit uh, intimidating. So what, what do you think is a way forward? Are we waiting for like a a new, simple, clean, unifying Minisat-like solver? Or should we, I don't know, embrace all these techniques and just put some machine learning on top to really learn how to harness it without really understanding what's going on? Or like, what would, if you, no, you know, no, if, but if, if you, you were like, like to advise some young people going into the field, like, where do you think we should go? 
I mean, there's this, uh, there are all easy uh, uh, things. So, so this, uh, um, but, uh, but you see like this face saving is also something which is easy. And um, I for sure tried this and also Niklas Ehn uh, tried it, but you, it only started to work if you combine it with this rapid restart. It's completely strange in a certain sense. And right, so the argument is if you do these rapid restarts, then uh, the phase saving helps you to avoid like redundant work because you will go into exactly the same search corner again. And, uh, and you want to have these uh, fast restarts uh, and the phase saving to, to order find short proofs for unsatisfiable format. That's actually the interesting part. And I'm not sure whether they did this actively. I don't think so, actually. Um, so they didn't really search for this, like, how can I get short um, unsat proofs? But this is the effect. And um, yes, in the paper by, by Laurent and, and Gilles, uh, the LBD paper, it's, it's also very similar. So they tried to find a metric, like what could, could allow you to predict whether the causes are, are useful. And this is at the very heart of this CDCL. So this is not like some strange technique. No, this is at the very heart, as I tried to explain, because if you do CDCL and you learn, you also have to forget these clauses. And, a good, and, and the best way we have now to do that, which gives you kind of, as I said, like a reduction, uh, a square root reduction in terms of memory, uh, that's this LBD. And the, uh, something else, like uh, which I don't want to go into now. But, but this is yeah, sort I, of the, uh, yes? Yeah, I agree. But just to, to, to sort of uh, play the devil's advocate as, as it were or, or you know if you look at i understand that these chance o settings are the best ones with these tiers and stuff but it's not like you know a clean mini sat like impression i mean it's, it seems like it's very hacky and mysterious and this is how you should do it and it just works oh so i wouldn't is, is say it's like... mysterious oh i wouldn't say it's okay. mysterious so this is like this is exactly the part what I wanted to say, so some of these came about and also this transic O thing by, by seeing some effect empirically, right? But now if, for instance, you would go into my latest solver, it's precisely explained and I claim it's also not sort of like convoluted or something. It's completely clear what you should do. But the way how it uh, sort of appealed this technique is different. I completely agree. But this is probably sort of the, sort of like you do empirical science to figure out like what could help, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the way forward? Like some, you know. No, uh, I mean, like, uh, there's one issue, of course. Uh, the issue is with, with all these uh, practical words, right? So people have this term like rocket science, right? Uh, so, so you have all these uh, technology which build on top of each other, and and of course, like now finding something new, but uh, it's it's very difficult. So I claim this target phases is something new, right? And also the the way to put this local search in it. Uh, but of course, to get to this point, you require maybe like 20 years, like in my case, or, uh, or more, clearly not just like the five years of PhD student has to get to this point. Um, so unless you have, of course, uh, uh, somebody who guides you in this direction, right? Yeah, I mean, that is also one, one related point to this is, of course, the way how we actually uh, uh, review papers uh, and in this empirical domain, right? So in order to get some of these uh, sort of improvements, you know, one has to be patient, but one has to encourage people to, to go towards uh, doing strange uh, empirical measurements, right? Okay. Any other short question, maybe? Or um, I think we're probably done. Thank you again for the talk. This was very interesting. So, uh, yeah, very thank you. And yeah. Thank you. So, um, we're going to take a